If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Shares back again and welcome to episode number 199 of Career Mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. We uh, start with a home game in the Barclays Premier League against newly promoted Fulham. Uh, we haven't played them in the BPL this season, uh, in, since we've been in the BPL, I don't think. I can't remember playing Fulham previously, I might be mistaken, but we've done so many seasons now, I start to lose track. We're starting a very strong side though, uh, Kishner, Ricardo Kishner has been able to force his way into the first team now, he's starting ahead of Timo Werner, so uh, we've got a new, or our newer left midfield signing is uh, has forced his way into the first team and hopefully he can continue to uh, put in the good performances that helped him grab that first team spot by putting in a good performance here against Fulham. Sadio Mane beats a defender down the right-hand side to start us off. Good cross in, but Yusuf Palzen's head up. Not necessarily the direction that I intended that to go. So we have to stay at 0-0 for now. Then uh, Moussa Dembele comes forward for, uh, for Fulham. Not the Moussa Dembele you think, but his name is Moussa Dembele. And uh, he is at Fulham, same as Moussa Dembele used to be the one that is now at Tottenham, of course. But uh, they came close to taking the lead there as well. So but chances at both ends to this point in the game. Cunningham's going to get in behind uh, Plenge here, unfortunately. But John Stone's going to try and close him down. But he cuts it inside to Heinemann, lays it off to a Christensen. He has a good shot, but it's well blocked by Biraki, my left back, cutting inside to, uh, to help with uh, the man over on the far side to make sure that we were able to get a block in and they weren't able to take the lead. Good tackle on Moussa Dembele there. Not necessarily strong enough from Tony Cruz initially or at the second attempt to uh, get the ball off the uh, the Fulham man there. But his shot was deflected off his teammate Dembele and it went wide and out for a goal kick. But as you can see, they continue to come forward. Very strong performance from Fulham here. Lusa Dembele seemingly at the middle of everything that was going on. But we picked them off. Lovely ball over the top. Flighted over the top of Dan Burn, who's not the fastest. Strahil Georgiev gets in behind and with his weaker right foot, toe pokes us in front in stoppage time at the end of the first period. Not necessarily deserved, definitely against the run of play, but we'll take it. Strahil Georgiev continues to score goals. I think that's um, I think that's 22 in 22 games from this season. Not entirely too sore uh, by this point. He scored in almost every single game, and if he doesn't score in a game, he'll score two in the next one. It's been really, really surreal the way that his goal scoring has improved year on year on year. I can't even begin to uh, portray to you how impressed I've been with Strahil Georgiev in this career mode. But again, showing great feet, good strength and good pace to get away from the defender there. Paulson just runs straight to the defender. It does drop to uh, James Ward prowse I think it was, on the edge of the box there, but unfortunately his shot was well saved by the goalkeeper but we're still 1-0 in front and just as Fulham had a very strong first half we were going to have a very strong second half and our plight was helped by the fact that they were going to go down to 10 men on the hour mark a second yellow card here for uh, a challenge that really wasn't the best from Sean Kavanagh he uh, was nowhere near the ball I was just I was in a physical battle and then Baraki just poked it away it went to uh, run onto it and Kavanagh just swiped his legs away from him a clear second yellow and uh, he was sent off. We actually weren't as dominant after that as uh, I was hoping we were going to be because they just kind of went into a defensive shell. That said, though, Yusuf Pausen is going to find Georgiev here, who's going to try and get it back onto his left foot, does so, and tucks it away to get his second of the game and our second of the game to give us a 2-0 lead and eventually a 2-0 victory. We weren't able to extend on it any more than that, but we don't really need to. Three points to three points. We're not really fussed about goal difference right now, considering we've got a decent goal difference anyway so uh, at the minute just wins are good enough now we jump into the Champions League against Juventus for the second game of the episode we beat them 3-0 at the Juventus Stadium in Turin uh, earlier on in the season we are currently top of the group obviously we've beaten Marseille and Juve and drawn and lost to Bayer Leverkusen so we're now playing Juventus for the second time a win would obviously do our qualification prospects no harm whatsoever a bit of a rotation side playing as you can tell this obviously coming midweek after the game at the weekend against Fulham so I needed to rotate slightly but George F maintained his place because uh, Quezzi's on his way back from injury so he couldn't start Quezzi Appiah so Saido Berahino took uh, took Yusuf Palzen's spot in the first team. Juventus starting a similar formation and a similar starting lineup to the one that we played away from home. Rossetti up top with Quadro Asamoah and Domenico Berardi on either side of him and then Vidal and Pogba etc. in the middle. But we were going to start off on the front foot. I was extremely... 
not necessarily disappointed, just surprised at how poor Juventus were in the away game. And we're actually going to start off on the front foot here as well. It's a good block though by Martin Caceres to stop us from uh, getting the shot properly on target. But we've noticed a couple of times in career mode this year, in Europe, the group stage tends to be really difficult against the smaller teams. But the bigger teams always seem to disappoint. I've noticed, was it the Liverpool career mode when we played Real Madrid two seasons in a row? And Real Madrid were really disappointing in Europe as well. We take a 1-0 lead here, thanks to James Ward-Prowse, in the 24th minute at home against Juventus. We're actually into the second half before the next highlight came along. Juve are just... Again, just not performing how you would expect Juventus to perform. Strahl Georgiev is in behind here, gets it into the back of the net, runs away to celebrate, but unfortunately he was the wrong side of the defensive line. He ran off on his own to celebrate there. His teammates in the crowd had already noticed your linesman with his flag up, but uh, sadly Georgiev uh, kind of fooled me. I was like, yes, brilliant, we scored a second, but then I realised, as did uh, Strahl Georgiev, that he was the wrong side of the defensive line, goal disallowed. Paul Pogba in behind though, but we pick it off. We're going to catch him on the counter attack this goes for the switch though I wasn't too sure why I did that in editing to be completely honest but Rossetti's going to have the shot and it goes just wide I'm going to have to be careful here I can't be making mistakes like that and let a side like Juventus back in it they haven't been performing very well but I don't want to get complacent they kicked the ball straight to me though from their free kick which is baffling Caceres gave it straight to Adarabi Oyo Timo Werner picks up on it eventually into Adarabi, into Adarabi Oyo again into Georgiev good turn onto his left foot and you all know what's going to happen when Strahil Georgiev gets the chance to finish a goal on his left foot. He's going in the back of the net. It doesn't matter who is in goal or where the ball is. If he's on his left foot and he has the opportunity to get a clean shot off, 95% of the time it's going to end up in a goal. And it did so here. And Georgiev's in behind on his right foot this time, drawing a good save out of Hugo Lloris. But in the end, we were able to get a 2-0 victory against Juventus. So in both games against Juve, we kept clean seats, a 3-0 win away from home and a 2-0 win at home. I can't explain why. I don't know how that's happened. I don't know why Juventus are so bad, but Bayer Leverkusen were really difficult for me to play against, and Juventus felt like they were the weakest side in the group. So it's really strange. We'll take it though. That puts us on 10 points in the Europa League, in Europa League, in the Champions League group. Obviously, this is our first season in the Champions League after winning the Europa League last season. They're playing Maritato in goal, Manchester City here. I don't know who that is. You guys will have to let me know in the comment section down below because I've genuinely absolutely no idea. Uh, starting Kwesi Apia alongside Yusuf Pals in this time around and uh, the main uh, starting 11 players are back although Daniel Amate is in at centre-back alongside John Stones this time around as uh, Matteo Masaccio was slightly tired so uh, we gave him a bit of a rest. Kwesi gets it into Ricardo Kishner trying to take advantage of this first team role now. Obviously Timo Werner played well against Juventus but Kishner has been playing a, even better in fact in uh, this so far it does really well to open up the opportunity for Mane and he does even better to rifle it into the near post the goalkeeper will definitely be disappointed with uh, conceding that goal but I don't really know whether or you know what rating he is I don't know whether I should expect to score goals like that against this goalkeeper or whether it's just you know a, a one-off and we won't necessarily be able to score chances like that again we do however have a penalty and I don't know why that's a yellow not a red because I was clean through. Cleasy was the last man. He took me down in the box from behind. That should be a red card. Never mind. Tony Crow steps up, sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. Cambridge United 2, Manchester, Sil Manchester City 0 at the Etihad. Uh, I mean, we'll take that for sure. Ricardo Kirchner dances around Boyata there, just completely scores him, makes him look like a, an absolute amateur. Kirchner into the box, drills it across, Quezzy's there. Half an hour in is Cambridge United 3, Manchester City 0 away from home. We got an unexpected two results against Juve. We're getting an unexpected result here against Manchester City. It's still 3-0 as we head towards half-time. It's Dedrick Boyata into Scott Sinclair. Great cross. Zuccolini goes up for the header. Can't get there. Drops on the edge of the box to Benzema. Redowns to Benzema again. He shoots and it goes straight at Fernando. Somehow he's able to take a Benzema powerful shot first time under control and then slot it into the back of the net. So that's 3-1. City perhaps getting back into it, but uh, we pick it off them. Julian von Haak playing in the midfield for them, of course. Obviously, formerly of us, lovely through ball to Kwesi Appiah here from uh, Tony Crows. And uh, a simple finish. Cambridge United 4, Manchester City 0. If this, if this could happen in real life, I'd be ec ecstatic. I can't believe we're getting these sorts of results now in this career mode. But our squad is good enough. And we are good enough and, you know, experienced enough now in the Barclays Premier League to be getting results like this on a consistent basis. It's just obviously in comparison to real life, not as realistic as 
uh, you might expect, but it's FIFA. It doesn't really matter. I'm delighted to be 4-2 up against Manchester United, regardless of the fact that Quezzi, not Quezzi, uh, Karim Benzema has scored a second for Man City. We're in front of our away fans again here, crossing the ball in from Tony Crows from the corner. Up goes Ricardo Kiesner. Not the tallest, but that's the header into the back of the net. Cambridge 5, Man City 2, and that was how the game was going to end. Really shock results in this one. And to be fair, the result against Juve in the first time we played them was a shock as well. So a 5-0 quote-unquote aggregate lead, although obviously uh, it's in the group stage, so it doesn't really matter. But we've got Manchester City to play next again, this time in the Capital One Cup quarterfinals. So if we can uh, perform like we did in that previous one and get a 5-2 victory again, that will do very nicely. We're currently uh, third in the league table right now. Only a single point behind Everton and Arsenal at the top. Uh, Chelsea have had a bit of an off spell and have now dropped behind us on goal on 28 points we've really closed the gap we were what four or five points off Chelsea and Everton we're now only one point behind Arsenal and Everton so it's all changed at the top and hopefully we can get ourselves back onto top spot in the next episode but that's going to bring today's to a close thank you very much for watching guys drop the video a like if you enjoyed of course and subscribe if you haven't already uh, I'm not doing a special video for 200 because I don't really have the time to be able to do a special video for 200 unfortunately but uh, the next episode will be episode number 200, obviously, with this being episode 199. So I just want to say thank you for the consistent support on this series, and I obviously will reiterate that in episode number 200 tomorrow. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.